how not to do good deeds. Part 7. The Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, Day 377, since January 20th, 2017. Day 744 overall, since January the 1st, 2016. Many other messages in between. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 8. By the way, I don't get any brownie points with God by preaching the gospel every day. We are just doing our reasonable service. You must understand in the early church, they preached the gospel. They had church every day. Not just on Sundays, but every day. And from house to house. Jesus said, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. something from that. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast to shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Here again Jesus is giving people instruction on how to pray. You might recall the Lord's Prayer on the disciples prayer Jesus was all about his people praying to God make no mistake about it he gave ample instruction about the matter of prayer and how to do it and what to do verse 7 he assumes that you're going to pray when he says but when ye pray Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Don't pray like the heathen. Mother Mary and and over and over again trying to I call it trying to conjure up something they get that even in our churches to some churches not as much as it used to be but the spirit of it is still in some of our churches where people are trying to conjure up something you don't have to conjure up Jesus and God you don't have to get down and Mary, Mary, true of grace, and rubbing on beads, and all of that. People, come on. So you, 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 you criticize other people's religion. What they're doing is wrong according to the scriptures. You don't have to beg God and plead God and say plead with God and say the same thing over and over to get a heard of God. God is telling you right now. Uh, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. You can pray the Lord's Prayer, people, in less than a minute. That ought to tell you something. Your prayers ought to make progress. They ought to be linear. You ought to be saying something, asking for something not saying the same thing over and over again thinking that God's going to hear your repetition he's not he heard you the first time he's not deaf so 
Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father, watch this, knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. But I want you to pray, but don't be saying the same thing over and over to me, because I already know what you need before you even ask me. Holy Father God, we thank you for your holy word. Help us to love it, to cherish it, and to obey it. Help us not to be hearers only, but doers. And I like the idea you gave me yesterday. Lord, help us to implement that as I've shared that with a few already regarding that doing part. Help us not only to be hearers, but doers. What a wonderful uh, reminder. And so, Lord, help us to obey your holy word here today. And when we leave here, in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. On last week, I shared with you in your hearing, by way of introduction, and then I had to go. Dr. J. Vernon, uh, Dr. Warren Worsby, rather, I'm going to quote J. Vernon McGee here shortly as well. But Dr. Warren Worsby said regarding this passage, and I like to do this, uh, as I said before, to help you understand the passage. For Dr. John MacArthur said, uh, I don't care what you think the interpretation is. <laughs> uh, I don't care what, you know, how you see it. He said, I'm concerned about how God sees it. And, uh, and there are some men of God who have not only a gift to explain the Word of God, they have a gift, if you will, to stay in the study for hours on end and learn what passages mean. He said we must pray in secret before we pray in public. Amen, somebody. It is not wrong to pray in public in the assembly or even when blessing food or seeking God's help. But it is wrong to pray in public if we are not in the habit of praying in private. Observers may think that we are practicing prayer when we are not, and this is hypocrisy. The word translated Closet means a private chamber. It could refer to the store chamber in a house. Our Lord prayed privately, so did Elisha, and so did Daniel, the man of prayer. Secondly, he says we must pray sincerely. The fact that a request is repeated does not make it a vain repetition. For both Jesus and Paul repeated their petitions, but not at the same time, not over and over again. So if you need money to pay the electricity bill, it's okay to pray about it on Sunday. But uh, if the electricity bill money has not come in, you better pray for it again on Monday. Okay, so that's okay. But you are not to sit there and plead and beg with God on Sunday, Lord, bless me with the electricity bill money, Lord, give me the electricity bill money, Lord, I got to have the electricity money, it's going to be cold for my little children, and my wife has already told me to curse God and die, would you please bless with your money, for the electricity bill. 
God already knows that you need the money for the electricity bill. And so you do not uh, need to say it over and over again. A request becomes a vain repetition, he says, if it is only a babbling of words without a sincere heart desire to seek and do God's will. The mere reciting of memorized prayers can be vain repetition. The Gentiles had such prayers in their pagan ceremonies. He said, my friend, Dr. Robert A. Cook has often said all of us have one routine prayer in our system. And once we get rid of it, then we can really start to pray. I have noticed this not only in my own praying, but often when I have conducted prayer meetings with some people praying is like putting the needle on a phonograph record and then forgetting about it. But God does not answer insincere prayers. Amen, somebody. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. J. Vernon McGee, a preacher who had a twain, I believe he got it from Texas, Well, I cut my teeth on as a young Christian. I would make it home every evening around six o'clock and hear Dr. J. Vernon McGee teach the Word of God on the Bible bus. And what a joy and blessing it was. I still have some of his notes uh, somewhere. He is home with the Lord now. J. Vernon McGee said, prayer is the greatest neglected resource, the greatest neglected resource that we have is a power that we simply are not using today. Part of the reason why we are not using prayer as we should is because some of us are going about the business of prayer the wrong way. Yes, there is a right way and a wrong way to pray. He said one of those wrong ways is praying to be seen, which Jesus condemns in this passage. He says, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues, or in the churches, if you will, and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men, noticed by men. Verily, verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. Most Jews were very ritualistic about their prayers. They were not into spontaneous praying at all. All Jews were required to repeat the Shema each morning and each night. The Shema is a sentence from Deuteronomy that says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. However, in the New Testament era, the super-religious rabbis had gathered other verses from Deuteronomy and Numbers that Jews were to memorize and recite at least twice a day. Many Jews recited this prayer at set times thrice a day. When the time came to pray, they stopped what they were doing and recited this prayer. Do not be shocked by this. There are some Christian denominations who have a prayer book, and you better pray those prayers already written down. You better not get up just saying things, praying about things. They have a whole prayer book. Uh, I had a, a, an Episcopal pastor to give me one, 
one day. Uh, and so, uh, so this is carried over from that time until now, in many cases. While many of the common Jews were not too excited about this, and just recited the prayer to fulfill what they were told was their religious duty. The Pharisees were heavily invested in these prayers. By standing on the street corners in order to be seen praying, they maintained their status among the people. So they prayed long, elaborate prayers, sort of like uh, Deacon Stevens did down at the Country Baptist Church on bended knee. Back in those days, of course, if you were not on bended knee, you were not praying. And uh, nobody could say it like Deacon Stevens down in the country church. Great God Almighty Jehovah, God of the universe. And then these prayers back in the day start instructing God instead of praying to God. God, would you please go by the hospital and uh, visit Miss Nail? Lord, would you go by the uh, old folks' home and visit Miss Nancy? Lord, would you go by the jail, the jail this morning, and visit old Henry? Then they start gossiping in their prayer, who was pulled over last night drunk. And uh, he would be here with us this morning, but he's in jail. Go by and visit him. And now that we know better, we understand that God told us to go by and see Miss Leo at the hospital. God told us to go by and see Miss Nancy at the old folks' home. And God told us to go to the jail and visit uh, the man in jail. It is not us. We should not be telling God where to go. He, he, he told us where, where to go and what we need to do. But that's how they pray. These little strong, rather these long, elaborate prayers that would take 15 minutes whole church call and response mm, 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 mm. yes Lord. yes nobody praying this just saying amen to the prayer that we pray yes Lord do it Lord do it yes yeah, this is meaningless but that's what that's how they did it back in the day mm, 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 yeah yeah all right yeah do it Lord go by and visit them Lord yes yeah well, we're not going, I said. Yes. We're going to stay here and eat food on the ground. Yes. Mm -hmm. Meaningless. All that is just meaningless, people. We don't need a we don't need a cheering squad. We don't need cheerleaders to pray. You might as well just bring out some pom-poms and start dancing and yeah, all right. Pray, preacher, pray, pray, deacon. You're so doing it. Like he ran a touchdown or something. Oh, what a prayer. What a prayer. What a prayer. If people would get up and say, what a prayer, what a prayer, you have not prayed. You prayed to them. You didn't pray to God. And that's precisely what Jesus is talking about here. Ooh, that deacon, he, he prays so beautifully, doesn't he? Are you kidding me? No, it's not, it doesn't matter how beautiful he prays. How eloquent he prays. It's the same prayer he's been praying for 30 years. That's why he can say it so well. Scholars state that some rabbis even made up prayers for nearly every occasion. They had a prayer for everything. All pastors have a black book that tells them what to say at the different occasions in the church, the weddings, Funerals, so called Christians, children, baptisms, and what to pray in some cases. 
So this is not far-fetched. But our fair sea brethren took it a little bit long, uh, further than where they should go. They had prayers for rain, for fire, for holidays, for harvest time, whatever it was, they made up a prayer for it and then they would teach these prayers to the people. However, they did this not with the intent to teach the people the power of prayer, but to satisfy their own prideful and fleshly ego. And Jesus says they got what they bargained for, they got what they were shooting for, they got their reward. They wanted men to praise them and look up to them, and that is what they got. We are very sad people when we try to sound and look spiritual for the purpose of trying to get people to honor us. That is so sad and so sick and so disgusting. The Greek word translated as reward is a business term meaning wages. In other words, the religious hypocrites, phonies, got what they worked for. The tragedy of this, however, is that God owed them nothing. God was under no obligation uh, to reward them for faithful praying and faithful service because they were not really praying to him in the first place. They were praying to the people. These hypocrites were saying the right words with their mouths, we hope, but they were saying them with the intent of impressing others. Watch the person that you call on in church. Okay, brother. Uh, Broward, we want you to pray this evening. And then he said, Pastor, him with a big smile, I'm so glad you called on me because I've been preparing to pray uh, in, a, in a service for a long time. So and he's all giddy about, no, 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 you, you need to stop him right there because we don't know what he's going to say. You don't prepare like that for, for prayer. You don't do that. Uh, the pastor should say, Brother Broward, Please sit down, we'll get somebody else who's not prepared. Because this is not a contest here. This is not a place for you to show off your praying prowess. Amen, somebody. They were praying in a self-centered manner, and they were rewarded with the human applause that they truly sought. And by the way, Brother Broward, if someone turns around and says, ooh, you really prayed, you, you have not prayed at all. Because that, that says to you that you were not praying to God. <clears throat> we all must consider in our hearts whether we want to be rewarded by God or by men. Are we praying for God to hear us or for men to hear us? If you're praying for men to hear you, Jesus lets us know that you will get your reward, but it won't be from God. Amen, somebody. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your holy word and for this message. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit and how you have fought back the devils and the demons and the Judas distractions and the Sanballas and the Tobiases from this time and we pray that that will continue to be the case throughout this day for Jesus Christ's sake the Lord forgive us of our sins our failures and our faults as Christians whatever the sin is fill us with the power the unction and the anointing of your Holy Spirit to do your will and to always pray for your glory, praise and honor and for uh, so that we can hear from you and not for the applause, the applause of people. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. 
Amen. Now, beloved, in closing, if you are with us today and you do not yet know the Lord Jesus Christ and the free pardon of your sins as your Lord and Savior, allow me to say to you how you can place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ today uh, so that he can save your soul from sin and the punishment of sin, sin which is hell. First, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says also, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, secondly, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. The Bible states in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. We die physically. These very, very expensive bodies that no doubt cost-wise would be in the whatever is beyond trillions of dollars are decaying and dying on our bones because of sin in our lives. Uh, the sinful nature passed down to us from Adam and Eve and our choosing to sin on top of that. We die physically because of sin. We die spiritually and go to hell because of sin. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And hell is an awful place. Hell is a place of so much pain that you'll be gnashing at the teeth. And uh, hell is a place of darkness. Today you can enjoy sunlight and the light in your house. You will not see a thing in hell forever. Hell is a place of an agonizing, painful memory. Hell is a place of torment. Hell is a place where you will be with the devil and his angels all of the time. That's bad news, but I have good news for you. For Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that includes you, that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died for your sins and was buried and rose from the dead by the power of God so for you, so that you can live forever with Him. Pray and ask Him to come into your heart today to save your soul, and He will. Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou, you shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou, you shall be saved, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. <clears throat> Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray and ask Him to come into your heart and to save your soul, and He will. Yes, it is as simple as that. You don't have to join a church to be saved. You don't have to shake the preacher's hand to be saved. You don't have to give any money to the church to be saved. You don't have to get baptized to be saved. You don't have to speak in an unknown tongue to be saved. There's no evidence of salvation. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will save you by his grace. Repeat after me, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart as you pray and ask God to save you because of his son, Jesus Christ. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I've done evil in your sight. I've done wrong in your sight. I've sinned against you. Through lying, through lusting, through stealing and other sins. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. That he died for my sins. Was buried and rose again. 
Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And help me to repent of my sins and turn from my evil ways. And to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Now beloved, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he died on the cross for your sins was buried and rose again on the third day allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life and that is trusting jesus christ as your lord and savior for more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in christ please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet what to do after you enter through the door jesus christ said in john 10 9 I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please email me at dw3 at gospelitesociety.com and uh, let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, Please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. We get emails all week long, and we'll be glad to receive yours. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you. Real good is my prayer. Let's all stand.